Hello and welcome to the last video in this series at the moment for the thermoplastic and thermoset video series. In this video we're going to be looking at the effects of PVC and other environmentally harmful plastics. So let's have a look at some of the common uses for PVC or polyvinyl chloride. So PVC is a soft, flexible plastic used to make clear plastic food wrapping, cooking oil bottles, teething rings, children's and pets toys, and blister packaging for a myriad of consumer products. It is commonly used as a sheathing material for computer cables to make plastic pipes and parts for plumbing and in garden hoses. Because PVC is relatively impervious to sunlight and weather, it is used to make window frames, garden hoses, arbors, raised beds and trellises. We mentioned this was called the poison plastic in a previous video. Uh, so let's just recap what we're talking about here with respect to PVC. Now PVC is dubbed the poison plastic because it contains numerous toxins which it can leach throughout its entire life cycle. Almost all products using PVC require virgin material for their construction. Just less than 1% of the PVC material is recycled. Products made using PVC plastic are not recyclable. While some PVC products can be repurposed, PVC products should not be reused for applications with food or for children's use. Let's have a look at some of the other harmful plastics from an environmental point of view. PET. Now PET is intended for single use applications. Repeated use increases the risk of leaching and bacterial growth. PET plastic is difficult to decontaminate and proper cleaning requires harmful chemicals. PET may leach carcinogens. Polystyrene is another harmful plastic. So polystyrene is an inexpensive, lightweight and easily formed plastic with a wide variety of uses. It is most often used to make disposable styrofoam drinking cups, take out clamshell food containers, egg cartons, plastic picnic cutlery, foam packaging and those ubiquitous peanut foam chips used to fill shipping boxes to protect the contents. Polystyrene may leach styrene, a possible human carcinogen, into food products, especially when heated in a microwave. Chemicals present in polystyrene have been linked with human health and reproductive system dysfunction because polystyrene is structurally weak and ultra lightweight, it breaks up easily and is dispersed readily throughout the natural environment. Beaches all over the world have bits of polystyrene lapping up at the shores, and an untold number of marine species have ingested this plastic with immeasurable consequences to their health. Polycarbonate. If you remember looking back at the previous video where we we're talking about the recycled number seven, this is where the polycarbonate comes in from a recycling point of view. So let's have a look at the polycarbonate from a harmful plastic aspect. Polycarbonate has potential for chemical leaching into food or drinking products packaged in polycarbonate containers made using BPA. Polycarbonate water bottles, popular among those who seek to minimize plastic pollution, are a major source of human BPA exposure. Studies have shown that BPA leaches into water even at room temperature. And when exposed to boiling water, BPA leaches 55 times more rapidly than it did prior to exposure to heat. Now these days, you can actually look for BPA free products. I suggest you do that and do your homework on which plastics you are purchasing. 
So here we have a table that covers plastics to avoid if possible. Now we've got on the left hand side here, the codes. Now these codes represent the, the number on the recycling on the bottom or the back of your plastic product. So you will see the recycling symbol and the number one, for example. So this list here is the plastics to avoid if possible. I'm just going to go through the codes. You can pause this video and have a look at the comments in your own time. But basically the codes are number one, which is PET, number three, PVC, number six, polystyrene, and that all familiar number seven, which is the catch-all other plastics. Like I said, you can pause this here to have a look at the comments. And when you're ready, you can move on to the next slide. So here we have the better plastics to use if possible. And again, I'm not gonna go through these in detail, but just go through the numbers and what that plastic is. So number two, high density polyethylene. Number four, low density polyethylene. And number five, polypropylene. Again, you can pause this here to have a look at the comments and familiarize yourself with what this is. Don't forget to check out our other videos in this particular series, as well as all of the video series we've already uploaded. You can contact us if you need any help with your projects in China. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Or oh, when you see this little bell symbol, if you hit that, you'll get a notification each time we upload new content. For more specialized information, visit our Learning Center page. Here, we're showing the blog page. In this particular instance, how to create a valid manufacturing contract in China to protect your IP. Thanks for listening. My name is Paul Adams from SoftEast, and I shall see you in the next video series.